And good morning once again. Welcome to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We apologize for that uh, short break. We're back now and we will be speaking with the Secretary General of the Ganala Fulani Development Association. And this conversation is really about their response to the Southern Governor's uh, call for the ban on open grazing and how they have described it as uh, very likely, they said it's uh, intimidation tactics with regards to uh, 2023 presidency. Uh, good morning to Ibrahim Abdullahi. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Nigeria. All right, quickly share with us. You're the Secretary, Secretary General of the Ganala Fulani Development Association. So share with us exactly your thoughts on this um, ban on open grazing and 2023 presidency. It has been described as an int intimidation tactics. Uh, why exactly is that? Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, received the news of the resolution of the Southern Governors as a shock and surprise. Uh, and we feel that it is unfortunate, you know, that uh, you can threaten the, the, the livelihood of about 17 million Nigerians living within your state. And at the same time, you are asking them to vote for you come 2023. Uh, what the governors are doing has completely scared us, you know, from supporting anyone from that part of the country. Uh, we are not against open grazing, uh, no banning open grazing as it is, but we are against the situation where you just wake up and stop open grazing without providing any alternatives. Uh, if the governor has provided at least few acres of land within their country, I mean within their uh, jurisdiction that would provide alternative uh, grazing areas for this people, then we'll be comfortable with that. But what they are doing now and what they are saying, their body language, you know, is indicating that uh, they are trying to displace the entire target in their area. And the truth of the matter is that if you displace 17 million people back to their original region and you expect them to live in peace with your people that have been living there and going about their legitimate uh, you know, businesses, then I think you, 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 are, you, are, you, are, you are fooling yourself. The truth of the matter is that um, uh, democracy is all about persuasion, it's all about creating uh, con uh, you know, trust among Nigerians. It, it's about putting structures across the country. It's about reaching out to people, to voters, irrespective of their tribe and religion. So uh, when you are trying to displace about 17 million people and you want presidency in 2023, I don't think that will work. Mr. Abdullahi. So um, what we are saying is that our people are now afraid of voting for anybody from that area because you, you did not vote for them and they have stopped you from your, your means of livelihood and you are expecting to vote them. What are they going to do? Okay. Maybe they, will, they are going to kill you. Mr. So what they are saying is that the, the southern governors should have embraced dialogue. They oh. should have invited all the critical stakeholders to discuss and find an amicable and agreeable you know, solution to the problem. Uh, you are threatening us with a ban on open grazing and at the same time, you are asking us to support candidates from that area. I don't think that will work. Okay, Mr. Abdullahi, um, could you hold on for a minute, Mr. Abdullahi? Um, I, yeah. I just have a few questions, you know, uh, that we needed to clarify. Um, yeah. You're saying that um, the Southern Governor's resolution to ban yeah. open grazing in their states is threatening the livelihoods of 17 million people. Are you yeah. saying that... There are 17 million cattle herders in southern states of Nigeria. Of course, so sure. when you are talking about the entire southern southern region, uh, you are talking about about 17 million herders. 
uh, with over 50 million head of cattle. And uh, we are asking them to leave that area entirely because we did not provide for, uh, any alternative to open grazing for them. M Mr. So, Abdullahi, I, I, I really wish we had the statistics, you know, to lay the facts bare regarding, you know, our population, you know, and all of that. But it, it really seems, you know, like a, like a very large number and a very big claim on your part to say that there are 17 million herders in Nigeria and that they all have PVCs and that, you know, because the southern governors are saying that there will be no open, um, open grazing in their states, that those people will not vote and then the presidency won't swing in the favor of, you know, the, of, a, of, a, of a southerner. But also another no, question... No, no, no. According, according Go ahead. to the statistics that we have from the national... Uh, uh, from the INEC, we have over 9 million registered voters. But what are the 17 million I'm talking about is the population of nomadic pastoralists both in the southwest and the southeast of Nigeria. Okay. So also, you mentioned that, um, according to you, and you know, the article that I saw online that you, know, you had granted an interview, that um, states who ban open grazing would not know peace, and that there's been no peace in Benue State since the ban open grazing. Um, don't you think others would interpret that as a threat to their safety? No, 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 that is not, that is not what I said. Uh, what I did say was that um, uh, we should all go to Benue State and find out whether truly there is peace there. Because for the past two years, there is no single harder in Benue State. So what I'm saying is that um, if you displace my people from your area and you force me to return to my own area, there will be friction between my people and your people that are living here and pursuing their, their, their business, their legitimate business. And we are all Nigerians. We are all guaranteed freedom of movement, freedom of uh, association by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But Mr. Abdullahi, that actually sounds... Mr. Abdullahi, no. I don't know how you say it, but that, that actually sounds, you know, like the threat I mentioned. If you're saying that if, you know, southern governors ban open grazing in their states, then mm. there will be friction among northerners and southerners in the north. I, I don't know, th that doesn't sound threatening to you? Now, take it, this, take it this way. You have your neighbor. You are living with your neighbor. Your children went to the house or the compound of your neighbor. And they were driven away by your neighbor. But uh, your children came into your house. I mean, his children came into your house. I don't think your children will look at them with respect. Uh, they will say that these are the people that have, I mean, these are the children that, uh, whose father has driven us from his own area. So what I'm saying is that uh, what is good for the, you know, for the, for, 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 for a full animal, it's also good for a young woman. So uh, if, if your people will come to the north and live in peace with us here, we, uh, we expect equal treatment to our people in our own area. That's what we are saying. We are not All treating right. anybody. <coughs> but we are just talking about the natural law of justice. Like, it doesn't still sound very different, but I, I get you know, you're trying to um, explain it better. Um, but I, I also want to ask um, if you or why it has been interpreted as driving these Fulanese out of these states. The governors have simply said that there would be no open grazing and no movement of cattle across the states. Um, and, you know, the argument has always been that when people want to do business in any other part of Nigeria, they go to those places, they purchase land. They set up, you know, a business place there and they do their business. So why can't we have the same thing with cattle? Why can't people who want to herd cattle buy land, use it as, you know, a place to, to herd their cattle and do business? Why does cattle need to move around, you know, these states? And why, is it a, why does it seem forceful that they should be given the freedom to carry their cattle across, you know, any state that they choose? Well, I have read, 
I have read the resolution of the Southern Governors over and over again and again. I have not seen anywhere they indicated that they are going to provide a piece of land, piece of, piece of land for our people but to buy and they, settle. So they, they don't need to, saying, do they need to provide? The governors should provide alternative, alternative to open grazing. No. Call it uh, grazing without provision, call it renting, whatever you decide to call it. The government but, should provide that, uh, you know, that alternative. But Mr. Abdullahi, does... Nobody the, is advocating for continuous, you know, grazing of animals, you know, moving of cattle from one place to another. Mr. Abdullahi... What we are saying is that we should encourage these people to set up, settle down in one place and start raising their animals like it is being practiced in, 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 in other countries. Mr. Abdullahi... The, um, yeah. If you go to any of the southern states to do business, yeah. does the government need to provide you a place to do business, or do you go in search of land with which you do your business? Well, we have read over and over again from papers, you know, from people from that area, some of the governors coming out to say that they have no single piece of land for grazing in their states. We have read that. We have seen that, and I know you know it, that the governors themselves have come out to say that they have no single plot of land for grazing. This is why we felt that when they, they, ban, they, they talk about banning open grazing, we are saying that their body language is indicating that they are trying to drive out other Nigerians. Um, there has also been land, I believe, provided in northern states for grazing, um, if, of course, if uh, needed. So why can't uh, these persons or these people take advantage of those, you know, uh, pieces of land that have been provided in northern states? Again, this, uh, this, is, this is the problem. We are talking about Nigeria where every citizen has the right to live wherever he chooses to. So uh, the fact that lands are provided in the north does not stop somebody who wishes to, uh, you know, to move to any part of the country to live because it's guaranteed by the Constitution. And again, I want you to know that we have, we have uh, over 400 grazing reserves, and uh, only about 105 of them are gazetted. Uh, and they are not enough to accommodate the, the, the hazards that we have in this country. So what we are trying to say as hazards is that both the federal and state government you know, are, are guilty. They have not provided conducive atmosphere for, 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 for our people to fulfill their business. So we are not trying to say that the northern governors are not also guilty. They are, because we have governors in the north that has about 24 of those grazing reserves that were designated, and only about two of them are gazetted. Right, Some of them have not gazetted any. They not. So they are all guilty. What we are saying is that our people will be treated as Nigerians. Or, um, of course, they will be treated as Nigerians. I, I want to ask something else. You know, with regards to treating them as Nigerians, there is yeah. um, other things you know, that people will look out for when they choose a candidate that they vote for. And that is a candidate that provides them with, um, first of all, assures them that their rights as citizens will be respected uh, you know, in a democracy, but also yeah. health care, infrastructure, um, 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 security, education, Th there's yeah. numerous of these things that are uh, important. So if you have yeah. a candidate that you're sure provides all these other things, are you saying that simply because he has not given you land to move your cattle across his state, that those other things are very, you know, are, are automatically unimportant? You see, um, it's very interesting to know that uh, I am personally an advocate of uh, evil presidency. What I'm saying is that candidates who aspire to lead this country should come out with a very clear program on how to treat all Nigerians equally. Uh, they should be able to reach out to every Nigerian. They should be able to build trust, bridges of trust between all Nigerians. Um, I have, for the past uh, 15 years, I've been advocating for the Igbo presidency. Unfortunately, the, the, the area where the Igbos live 
the defense plans to start attacking and killing my people. You know, what we are saying is that we need a candidate from anywhere within Nigeria that uh, will treat all Nigerians equally. Even though some people are suggesting that um, uh, the issue of zoning and the issue of uh, power shifting is, is undemocratic. But we have started it. So I'm saying that, in my humble opinion, since we have started it and two of the geopolitical zones have benefited, it is only natural that we should move to another, I mean, the last geopolitical zone. That is the southeast of Nigeria. But unfortunately, all the politicians from that area are not looking at it the way it should be looked into, looked at. Okay, so I, I need to get you on record, um, Mr. Abdullahi. Do you want yeah. a 2023 president that is from the south? Yeah. Sorry, I think... I said, do you want a president that is from the south in 2023? I have been advocating for that, especially for Evo presidency. But as things stand now, when those people come out to threaten my people, uh, I'm beginning to change my mind. Uh -huh. The truth okay, is so that um, you don't get the presidency through threats and blackmail. You have to come out and pay build structures across all divides, try to build bridges of trust, let all Nigerians know that they are comfortable and safe under your leadership and presidency. You don't threaten people simply because you want presidency. So what we are saying is that even now, if a southerner, a very good democrat, a true Nigerian that believes in the corporate existence of Nigeria, that believes in the constitution of Nigeria, that has the right, I mean, the, the mind, and the resolve to treat all Nigerians equally. Why not? After all, we have had so many northern leaders and they have done nothing, absolutely nothing to my people. So we are not tribalists, we are not, uh, we are, you know, religious, uh, religious jingoists. We are not um, religious, uh, you know, you know uh, we don't treat people with religious sentiment. We are, all we are looking for is a president that will give our people a sense of belonging. Okay. See him from the south or the west. But what we are saying is that you cannot achieve that by threatening other Nigerians. You cannot achieve that by black men. You cannot achieve that by, by completely destroying the means of livelihood of millions of Nigerians. Okay, Mr. Abdullahi, um, the reason for the conversation about banning open grazing in the first place is simply because of the clashes that have occurred between farmers and herders and how, you know, there is news about you know, these herders encroaching into people's farmland and then that causing conflict between the farmers and herders and the community. So um, what does the um, Gan Allah Fulani Development Association of Nigeria have to say about these herders who encroach into people's farmland, who threaten the livelihoods of the farmers and then go ahead to commit atrocities such as murder? Well, our, our position has always been that um, there should be a, an effort, you know, to try to sensitize and educate our people to know that you cannot even go out of grazing unless you eat food. Therefore, a farmer is very, very important in your life. We are also saying that there are over 400 grazing reserves that have been designated in 1965 with a law that is called 1965 Grazing Reserve. We are saying that state governors who have the custody of land in their state should designate those grazing reserves and encourage these people to settle in. That will definitely resolve crisis, will completely stop crisis between farmers and herders. We are saying that communities will make deliberate efforts to form committees that cut across all stakeholders, you know, that will be meeting from time to time to resolve all crises that are uh, border on encroachment of farmland. All right. this, is, this has been our position. Uh, we don't support stopping grazing, open grazing without providing alternatives. What we are saying is that government should provide alternatives to open grazing. 
All right. Um, I wish we had, I genuinely wish that we had more time. But Ibrahim Abdullahi, thank you very much for stopping by and for sharing your thoughts with us. I hope that we can create a, you know, you another much, you know, day and have this conversation again and go deeper into this. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. This is where we have to say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching. I obviously covered, you know, key issues in Nigeria regarding the recanting, you know, of that statement, you know, that she was guilty, talking about Chidima um, Ojuku regarding the murder of Super TV CEO. Um, we talked about some racial slurs that came out from Stephen Smith when he um, butchered the names of Nigerian athletes in the U.S. And um, we also talked about, you know, key issues concerning Turning our security on of the press and uh, the and open course, grazing issue. Yes, um, but of course, uh, this is where we wrap up this morning. Thank yes. you very much. If you want to, of course, to catch up on any of these conversations and uh, re watch them, remember to catch up uh, get, uh, with us on social media. It is at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram, and same with our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gie Ogbon. And I'm Aneta Felix. Say bye bye.